One thing anybody of a blended heritage or a mixed race experience will tell you is that when they're asked to check a box, the joke is you always have to check other. Either you're forced to only check one, or for some reason there's not enough choices that give you an accurate representation of how you choose to say who you are. So you always end up just being other. As soon as you accept that other isn't a bad word, that other isn't something to be ashamed of, and that other isn't something to try to get out of, the more comfortable you'll be and the more free you are to discover what your own identity is and what you want to do with that. My name is Erica, and I would identify myself as a Hapa. It literally means half, and that's exactly what I am. I'm half. I'm one half my father, and I'm one half my mother. They happen to be of two different ethnicities. My father is Caucasian. He's mostly German, some English and Scottish in there. And his great-great-grandfather was the first one to come to America looking for a better life. My mother is Chinese. Her family is from Shanghai, that's where she was born, and she came to America when she was 10 with her family, and they were looking for a better life too. When my parents got married, it was only two years to the day after the last anti-miscegenation law was struck down in six, the last 16 states, making it legal for them to get married and therefore have adorable children like myself and my sister. Both of us, uh, my sister and I, grew up, however, in Japan, in a small island called Okinawa. So growing up as a biracial American citizen in Okinawa, Japan, needless to say, I came out with a very interesting blended identity. And it didn't take me overnight to get there. It took a lot of hard work. It took a lot of self-introspection. I went to school with a lot of people who looked like myself. So I had the interesting experience of being mixed race, but actually sort of growing up being the dominant culture. By the time I turned 17, 18, and decided that I needed to continue on to university, I'd never given much thought about that. I always just assumed I'd go to America because that's the country of my citizenship. And so that's what I did. I ended up in Southern California, and there I was. This kid who was supposedly American by passport, who ethnically, no one could really tell what I was exactly. I remember my second or third day being on my college campus and realizing I have never seen so many blonde people in one place. I have no idea how I'm going to survive this. But have the sort of weird juxtaposition of, but these are supposed to be my people. This is supposed to be my culture. I'm supposed to be American. And yet I didn't identify culturally American at all. By the second half of my sophomore year, I was sick. I was sick of America. I was sick of what I saw as white Christianity. I was sick of feeling like I didn't belong anywhere. You have to understand, I was on a college campus. I went to a, a fairly, a mid-sized liberal arts Christian university. And one of the reasons why I had picked a Christian university is because I felt like those, that would be somewhere that I could find some belonging. My expectations were that I would find acceptance, I'd find a place. My expectations were completely unmet. Instead of feeling like I belonged somewhere, I felt, I never felt more alone than I did at that point in time. And so I left, I left. I basically made up my own exchange program and I went to England. What did start taking place at that point, being outside of America and outside of evangelical Christian culture 24-7, was that I started to really think about who I was on my own. I discovered that being Hapa, that being biracial, was immensely important to me. It meant that I had the best of two worlds to choose from. It meant that I have a rich heritage that came from both two sides of people who simply came, overcame their differences and made me. I realized also that living outside of America again, that I was actually pretty comfortable in that situation. And so for the first time I realized that being other wasn't bad. What I realized was that society had imposed on me the value that being classifiable was good. And I didn't have to accept that as truth. Being classifiable isn't necessarily good or bad, it just is. And so once I rejected the dogma that I had to fit into someone else's classification, someone else's box, someone else's way of saying who I was, 
The freedom that I felt from realizing that was immense. When I returned to America and I returned to my college campus, I think I was a very different person. My mind was a lot more open. I wasn't afraid as much anymore of being different. I embraced it. I realized that maybe for the rest of my life, I'm going to be an other. I think it's important for people of mixed race and mixed culture to realize that it's not bad. Being other has its pros. Being other makes you a very unique and interesting person who has a whole set of skills and culture and depth of heritage, experience and wisdom to draw on that someone from a monoculture or a mono-ethnic background doesn't have. For me, my Christian faith is very important. And one of the things I've always found interesting is that there's a biblical mandate to be all things to all men, not meaning that you should have some sort of weird, gray, amorphous character, but it means that you don't have to be dogmatically attached to one single way of seeing the world, of seeing yourself, of seeing other people. And in fact, when you do that, I think you lose a lot of opportunities to communicate Christ to people. Jesus said the kingdom of God is here now, among you. And he was talking to everybody. The reality is, is that in America, we're just gonna get more and more diverse. The idea of multiculturalism, i.e. being of, being identifying with and operating in a variety of paradigms of thought and being is a reality that every single person has to face, no matter what their faith, their ethnicity, their culture, their origins. It's a skill that everyone needs to have because that's the reality of our world. Christianity is not an exclusive little club. It's not made up of only white people. It's not made up of only black people. It's not made up of only Republicans, and it's not made up of only Democrats. It's not made up of only young people or only old people. That's the beauty of what the example of Christ is, is that he came for all people in all times and in all cultures. And the transmitting of those values, of that love, is supposed to transcend that. Transcend doesn't mean ignore. Transcend means to take into account, listen to it, process it, and then be able to dialogue with that, above it. But still with that as your foundation underneath. And I think that's where you have to go with diversity.